Good evening. It's a it's Saturday night. I'm running some errands. This week, well, this week's been one to forget, really. Um, not because of work, just because of other things that have happened. I'll tell you about them a bit later on. But let's start off with what happened during the week. Monday. Well, on Friday last week, my fans started playing up a little bit. Came up with a few. Uh, Warnings and went into limp mode and I couldn't get it into the garage. And then on Sunday it miraculously fixed itself. Uh, I've took it into the garage since. I've got a couple of intermittent faults, they're nothing serious, but they'll get seen to eventually. Um, but anyway, Monday I started off with nothing to do. Um, mainly because it's, it's pretty, quite, pretty quiet this last week or so. Um, but then I got a phone call uh, about moving a deep fat fryer. Um, so I moved the deep fat fryer from one of our customers in Stockport to Piccadilly Gardens. Now you may have seen on the news like a week and a half ago now, uh, a building was on fire in Piccadilly Gardens and it's this same building I'm delivering to. Luckily enough I'm delivering to the ground floor, only the top floor was on fire but the water from the fire brigade putting the fire out short, circuit, short, short circuited downstairs and blew up a couple of fryers so that was what i was doing delivering fryers and i've had another phone call i might actually be delivering another fryer there next week um but that's for next week isn't it and then <coughs> i don't know if anyone's ever delivered to piccadilly gardens before but you can actually drive right outside the uh, the fast food establishment i'm talking about but then I don't know how to turn around because you can't drive forward anymore because then it just goes to the tram tracks and there's no way to, well, unless you do a three point turn across the tram tra tracks and drive through the bus station, which you can do because lo like vehicles loading can go through there and that's the only way I could get off. So that's what I did. Hopefully I don't get a ticket. But if I do, the company has said they'll pay for it uh, pay, pay for it anyway. Anyway, and then went and uh, took some goods back to Stockport that I still had on the van, the pallet and a couple of skates and stuff that I'd borrowed. Um, and then I sat around for hours and hours searching for a job to get me down to Northampton because I had collections on Tuesday to do and I couldn't get a Scooby-Doo, nothing. I caught it on loads down to London, down to Northampton, down to Kent, down to Brighton. Caught it on pretty much everything that came up. I even quoted at 90p a mile for a Luton job down to London and didn't get it. And I put in the notes that I was going down there and I wanted to be down there for the next morning. Nope, didn't get it. So God knows what price that went at. But anyway, uh, that was absolutely nothing. So Tuesday, I dead miled it down to um, Northampton, loaded the van up, then I loaded, I loaded a second load in... Um, Derby, I don't like say it hurt him. I keep forgetting what I'm doing, in Derby and then I did a drop in Littleborough, Oldham, Rochdale, wherever, then a drop in Stockport and then I went over to Wigan and did a site clearance, so Tuesday was pretty busy uh, and the site clearance was in Wigan and I live in a Wigan postcode so I thought it's no rush getting it back, I'll just finish for the day now uh, and not get stuck in loads of traffic because that's what I did, Tuesday finished nice and early. Wednesday morning, got back into Manchester, dropped off all the site clearance of rubbish and everything. And I quoted all day again. Again, it was the same situation as Tuesday. Thursday morning, I needed to be back in Northampton to do some more collections. And I got nothing. But, quite luckily, I got nothing. Because Wednesday night, Leanne started getting... A re well, she'd already had a headache, but it really intensified on Wednesday, and she had like blurred vision, and she was just she wasn't feeling herself. She felt like something was wrong, um, but she was trying to like do some bits and bobs and just trying to feel like everything was normal. So I went to bed like normal, and she came and joined me in bed shortly after because I was getting up early to go to Northampton. And I got up and she wasn't there, which is unusual if I'm getting up early, that she's normally asleep. Checked my phone, she'd messaged me saying she's downstairs and she's really struggling with her head and can I come and help her? Um, which is very unusual for my wife. She's very independent and if she doesn't feel well, she'll sort herself out. She'll, then, like, she, like she's, she's tough as nails. 
else basically um so i went down and she was really struggling with her head um so i just i decided i'm gonna not go and do the collection because it's not timed anyway i can go and do it whenever i want really during the day as long as it's that day and i want to just sit with her and make sure she's okay for a bit and make sure that, like she gets a doctor's appointment later so at eight o'clock she phoned the doctors got a doctor's appointment for 20 past 10 and we went and i went up and got the kids ready got freddie ready for nursery because it was uh, world book day on thursday so he went as the gruffalo he looked he looked pretty scary actually he was absolutely loving his, his outfit um they had like a big gruffalo head that went on top of his Callie, our cat no, not a fan <laughs> but anyway um yeah so dropped him off at school and i got back and leanne, leanne said she was feeling better so I thought, right, okay. And she was like adamant that she could drive herself to the doctors. I wanted to take her, but she wanted to drive herself. And she was going to be all right, and I should go to work. So obviously, like the good husband, I listened to my wife. Instead of doing what I thought was best, I listened to my wife. Um, and I went to work. And we're on the phone while she's on the way to the doctors, and I'm on the way to do my collection in Derby. Got to my collection, went and loaded the van, and as I got back in the van after loading, I had a missed call. So I phoned her back and she said, right, I've been to the doctors. The doctors are really worried about the pressure in my head and my headaches. And I need to, I've been referred to go to um, hospital ASAP. So oh, God, right, I'm on my way back. I'm on my way, I'll meet you at the hospital to get there, whatever. Um, because her dad, Bob, was going to have our daughter Finlay because only Fred goes to the nursery in a minute. Uh, thank you, Bob. And she was like, no, I don't feel like I can drive. I've got double vision and all this. So I'll wait at home because you won't get to park the van anyway at the hospital. So I got my foot down. To say there may have been a few, few speed camera vans that may have caught me. Uh, yeah. Family comes first at the end of the day. Like, I've got to get home. So I got home. Um as quick as I could and got in the car and got to the hospital as quick as we could and the um, GP had referred us straight into EAU which is the emergency assessment unit so we didn't have to go into A&E. A&E had a four hour waiting time so she wouldn't have been seen for four hours minimum before she got any attention. EAU 45 minutes and we were, she was being taken care of and the staff in there were absolutely fantastic. Uh, she did get admitted to hospital so after like her initial assessment, they determined she probably had um, meningitis. Yes, she had meningitis, uh, which causes swelling on the brain and can come with some nasty effects if not treated straight away. Uh, so they started treating her with antibiotics straight away uh, for uh, one of the signs of meningitis. Um, and took her straight for a CT scan straight for blood work straight for a chest x-ray um, and everything like that and they were honestly they were on her straight away she, they, were, they were brilliant and leanne leanne is like a really talkative person she, she's always chatting and not always having a laugh and everything but she could barely string a sentence together she could barely stand up or anything and walking she was stumbling and it just wasn't like her. It's, it honestly terrifying to see it really is um, and she got admitted that night um, and obviously there to go home uh, thank you to Sue as well she picked Freddie up from nursery Bob and Laura had them uh, and put them to bed until I got home and then they could go and get some rest themselves thank you very much both of you all three of you um, oh god just like talking about it it's like gut wrenching like she was so just wasn't herself so poorly and it's not it's really not nice to see um so friday um obviously there's certain visiting hours on that ward so i couldn't i wasn't supposed to be going but they'd agreed to let me go and drop her off some clothes and help her get sorted in the morning and whilst i was there one of the doctors came in to say um do you want to have your lumbar puncture because on the thursday thursday night she was umming and ahhing and she really didn't want it Laura, her sister's had one before and had some side effects because of it. Um, and then 
she agreed that morning that's like that was the only way to fully determine what was actually wrong with her and treat her properly and it came with the possibility that if it wasn't uh, bacterial meningitis it was just viral she could go home so she was well up for it as soon as she heard that because if it was bacterial meningitis she was in there for 10 days on antibiotics and she does not like sitting still she likes moving about she likes doing stuff she likes everything she does not want to be sat in a hospital bed um, so she allowed them to do it so I then had to rush home because stupid me forgot to leave the car seat for Finley with Bob because he was having the kids because Freddie was in nursery and then Finley was at home and he was going to pick him up well I was just so I rushed home put the car seat in Bob's car and then I rushed back to the hospital because they said it was going to be early afternoon it, it got to like half two three o'clock before they came so I suppose it's still early as you have to be. It took five attempts to get spinal fluid out during the lumbar puncture and she was in agony, bless her. <sighs> it wasn't nice. Um, but it did come with good news. She only had a low count of, count of white blood cells in the spinal fluid, which meant it was even more likely viral or bacterial had pretty much dissipated with the antibiotics she's already had so she got to come home so that's where she is now she's at home um, so today she's just been resting really she has been getting up and trying to do bits but she always was going to but she's currently resting on the couch um, I'm just running some errands but thank god honestly it was panicking worrying about her it's just it's I like to thank you to my in-laws and my sister-in-law because you're fantastic and you dropped everything to make sure you could look after the kids and a massive thank you to any driver that I've booked this week especially towards the end of the week and into Monday so I booked everything out for Monday because I, I I don't know what I sounded like on the phone but I was stressed and panicking and worrying that much about Leanne that I was probably quite rude and just like trying to get rid of the jobs like yeah you do it come on but uh, I, I'm very grateful to everyone that's took a job and everyone that's done a job and uh, I, I really appreciate all of you. You've all done cracking jobs so far. <coughs> it worked out quite well actually because the person, the company that did my collection uh, for Friday from Northampton up to Manchester managed to reload in Manchester and get a job to London for Monday morning. And so it worked out absolutely fantastically that way. Um, but yeah what an end to the week it was not nice but like I said thank you to everyone and uh, you may have noticed I've also changed some things about the channel I've changed uh, it from the company name into my own name and there is reasons behind it but it, it's just what I take the, the company that side of it like I feel like sometimes I can't say what I want to say all the time uh, so I'll take the company away from it and just leave it with me because I can say what the hell I want and uh, people can like it or not but if your company's there people can go after the company can't they and that is that so thank you all for watching please do like and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next one hopefully I'll be a lot, be a lot cheerier and no one will be hospitalised Fingers crossed. Thank you. Bye-bye.